All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us so much today. Um, we're going to be going into Major Mondays shortly, but before we jump into the content for today, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you for spending some of your Monday night with us. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of content, and hopefully this is going to be a great opportunity to answer um, what questions that you have about uh, computer science and computer security, which is what we're going to be talking about today. If you're new to Zoom, um, please note there is a Q&A feature on Zoom that you can use to submit questions to us. So go ahead and click on that Q&A icon. Feel free to type in any questions you have throughout today's session, and we will answer them as soon as we can, but we'll primarily be answering questions at the end. I also want to let you all know that for Major Mondays, we do have upcoming events. We're trying to have a Major Monday every Monday. Uh, so upcoming on November 9th, we have elementary education and early childhood education. And then on November 16th, we also have criminal justice. If you're looking for places to engage with us or maybe you want to watch previous Major Mondays, we have recorded these sessions and we'll be recording this one too. You can go to uccs.edu slash virtual to sign up for any of our future events or watch our previous events. So feel free to engage with us there. Uh, now I'm going to introduce uh, Mike and he's going to be talking through some of the content today. So Mike, you can go ahead and take it away. All right, thanks, Eddie. Let me uh, switch the screens here. And I think we should be ready to go. Um, is that one up, Eddie? Yeah, you're good. All right, sounds good. Um, and I totally, well, I'm giving away the ending here. All right, so hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. I certainly appreciate it. My name's uh, Michael Coral. I'm the Assistant Dean of the College of Engineering and Applied Science. Um, it's great to have you here, uh, and certainly this is an exciting time for all of you as you start to, to look at different colleges and different uh, programs of study uh, and, and start doing that. I'll tell you right now, I have a, uh, my oldest daughter is a junior in college, and, uh, and it, was, it was a lot of fun going through this process with her and, and making sure we found the right school and the right program uh, for her to do her, uh, her college work, and, and we were successful in that. So I did this just a few short years ago, and, uh, and looking forward to, to helping you all out in this process as best I can. Uh, as sort of a disclaimer to begin, uh, I'm not a computer science uh, major. Uh, my background is more on the mechanical engineering side. However, I'm part of the, the college, so I'll be able to, to give some uh, good information about the computer science programs and then uh, hopefully answer as many questions as I can. We were expecting uh, the department chair, but uh, it looks like he's not gonna be able to make it uh, tonight. And any questions we're not able to answer, I'll make sure uh, we get the answers for, for folks and get it sent out to you. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and, and move forward here. Uh, just a little bit about the College of Engineering and Applied Science. Uh, right now, we're made up of three programs. We have a computer science uh, department, electrical computer engineering, and mechanical and aerospace engineering. Uh, right now, there's there's two buildings that are actively uh, involved in, in where we teach and in our labs and, and such are. Uh, the top one you can see is Osborne, uh, and then the bottom picture there is the engineering building, uh, which houses pretty much the computer science labs and, and faculty uh, and, and administrative offices as well. So to give you a sense of the College of Engineering, uh, there's about 1,700 students, about 1,400 are undergrads, <coughs> the remaining 300 are, are grad students. Computer science is, is the largest uh, department that we have with about 700 students uh, total and making up about 40% of, of our, uh, our students. Um, since uh, Jagal isn't here, I'll go ahead and, and do this. So here's your kind of snapshot of the different undergraduate degrees that are in the computer science department. Now, I'll talk about each of these and, and some of the specifics about what they are uh, shortly. I already saw one question about programming language, and I think you'll get that answer in the upcoming slides. But uh, just so that, that you see, there, there, are BS, there is a BS degree, which is Bachelor of Science. Uh, there's a couple of Bachelor of Innovation degrees. And then new this year, uh, our first class came in uh, this fall in the Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. 
Uh, it's also worth mentioning that we do have an accelerated master's in computer science. So that's where you go from your bachelor's of science to your master's in five years. And that's something you don't necessarily need to know to do now, but uh, you'd have to be in the BS program. You'd have to sort of make that decision probably somewhere uh, the beginning of your second year of study uh, to make sure you're, you're lined up for that. And what they do is they double count a couple classes and they make sure that that it is uh, able to be done in five years. So if you're thinking about going that far, and I know a lot of you probably aren't thinking about a master's degree right now, uh, but that's something to keep in, in the back of your mind as you, as you move forward. And certainly your advisors and the faculty can talk to you about those as well. Um, so again, I'll talk about each of these a little more detail as we, we go on, but just wanted to give you a snapshot of, of the different paths that you could take in, in computer science. So starting with the Bachelor of Science in Computer Science, now we call it the BSCS. Uh, it emphasizes computer science knowledge accompanied by strong math and science preparation. So if your plan is to go to grad school in computer science, uh, especially if you want a PhD, uh, this is probably your best option, okay? And then the second best would probably be the Bachelor of Arts followed by the Bachelor of Innovation. Um, this degree, the Bachelor of Science, is accredited by ABET, which is uh, a national, um, actually probably worldwide accreditation society. And what they do is they, they establish some kind of um, criteria and, and student outcomes that, that each school must demonstrate that they're achieving. Um, and every six years they come and visit uh, campus and make sure that, that the work we say we're doing and we're assessing and we're continually improving the program. So it's important and that's something that is, is important as you, as you look at different degrees to get that ABET accreditation because it is sometimes necessary uh, for jobs um, and grad school programs as well. Um, right now we're uh, looking at accreditation for the other programs. Uh, I think there might be one of the BI programs is accredited, uh, but the BA probably won't be because there's simply not enough math and science um, in there. Uh, just real quick, what's a Bachelor of Innovation? So you have your emphasis major, in this case, computer science or the game design or the cybersecurity or the different paths there. And what they do is they you have the gen ed, which every student on campus takes a certain amount of gen ed. Um, and then you have this innovation core. And that that's really the, the kind of neat part of this. And they talk about uh, entrepreneurship um, and, and kind of the business side of, of of development and things like that. So it's it's kind of a cross, I you know, a very, uh, I guess, high level explanation would be it's kind of a cross between um, business and uh, the technical degree. All right, and, and I have a graphic later that'll show you the difference between the three of these. You get to the Bachelor of Arts, uh, it's a flexible degree plan. You're allowed, allowed to take a lot more gen ed type courses. Uh, so you get a broader, and Bachelor of Arts is typically a broad, uh, education. Um, and in this case, we do a little bit of emphasis on the computer science. Uh, there's four tracks available with the Bachelor of Arts. There's artificial intelligence, machine learning. Uh, there's cybersecurity track, a game development track, and, and then the computer science uh, general uh, track. So to give you a snapshot of what these look like, um, so in here you can see the red is the Bachelor of Science, the yellow uh, bars are the Bachelor of Innovation and the blue is the Bachelor of Arts. So when you look at the degree, so on the far left of your screen, you see the degree and technical electives, you see they're all pretty high. There's there's quite a bit of computer science or whatever the, dis, you know, the specific discipline is within computer science. There's a lot of that in there. As you move across this graph to the right, the next columns are the innovation and cross-discipline stuff. You see a lot of innovation for the, whoa, for the Bachelor of Innovation and not much, certainly almost, I think it's zero for the others. Okay, so all that innovation's in the Bachelor of Innovation. You can see in the math and the science, you see that the, the Bachelor of Science has higher values for those, and the, the others are, are certainly lower, and certainly for science, the, the Bachelor of Arts is much lower. Uh, and then you look at the general electives. Remember when I talked about Bachelor of Arts, I said you get that broad range of, of things to study, a, a, you know, it, it's a well-rounded uh, education where there's a lot more um, courses outside of the engineering and applied science college and things like that. And that certainly pops up. So at, at the end of the day, all these have about the same number of credits required for degree, but you see they're just uh, um, 
dispersed differently for the different majors. So I think this is a good way to see. So if, if you're interested in computer science, but you're a little worried about your math and science, that's where this uh, BI or the BA might come in. Uh, but if you're real strong technical and that's all you wanna do, certainly the Bachelor of Science is gonna be the, the way forward for you. And again, this, is, this gives some flexibility for different types of people to go after those degrees uh, that best suit them while still focusing on the computer science and the, the discipline. So looking at the different degree types, and again, there's that computer science, which came in the BS, the BI, and the BA, and that accelerated master's. And here's some of the, the courses of study that you might expect to find as you pursue a computer science, any one of those type of degrees. Um, there's certainly the programming, and again, Java, Python, C++, Unix are, are certainly in, the, in there. So I think that answered one of the questions that was asked already. Um, you know, some software engineering, uh, operating systems, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, and so on and so forth. You can read the list. I don't have to read it all to you, but you can see that that's what you would expect from most computer science um, uh, programs across the nation. And that, that's kind of that standard computer science stuff. And again, our, what makes us different is we do offer that BI and BA track, which are, are really unique to uh, UCCS. Moving along to the game design and development, you saw that that was one of the degree programs in, in uh, Bachelor of Innovation, and it's one of the tracks in the Bachelor of Arts. And here you see that you'll certainly get some of the computer science and the programming type stuff in there, but then you get into the game design development theory, which makes sense for the, the program. You learn how to do some computer graphics and then the artificial intelligence. The BI program would have the entrepreneurship as well as the business and innovation. You probably wouldn't see that in the BA unless you took it as one of your kind of gen ed type courses. Okay, so that shows you kind of the span in game design and development. The computer security or, or cyber security, again, you have your computer science, your programming, all that. You get into a little bit of ethics and then your different securities and, and uh, um, cryptography. Uh, threat identification. Um, the BI track would have this business and innovation piece. And, and it's important to note that UCCS is a DHS, so Department of Homeland Security and the National Security uh, Agency, NSA, Center of Excellence in Cyber Defense. So that's a distinction. We had to um, make sure that our programs met uh, certain standards and requirements to get that. It's not all that easy to get, but it is a distinction of our program that we're certified by DHS and, and NSA. All right, so moving along. Um, so that those are kind of the three types of, of majors. Um, in any program in engineering, you certainly can uh, add a minor to your program. So if you did the computer science, you might be able to do game programming, for example, and it might only be a couple extra courses uh, to get that. Um, and, and you can do any of these and it's just some of them are much closer and you might be able to, to get it within a few courses. Others, you might have to take uh, um, more courses uh, and, and maybe add some time before graduation to get the minor. But just showing it that there is some flexibility in here. There are some courses that, that certainly overlap into some of these um, disciplines which help you get that, that minor uh, much easier. Um, some opportunities that, that we have here at UCCS. Uh, first of all, there's professional clubs. Um, so you see all there, um, uh, and I'll try to remember what each of these ones is. I know NSBE is the National Society of Black Engineers. SWE is the uh, Society of Women Engineers. Um, SHPE is the Society of Hispanic, Hispanic Professional Engineers. And IEEE is, is a pretty standard one. I apologize, I can't remember off the top of my head what AIAA is. Um, but it has to do with uh, computer science and, and engineering. Um, so there are professional clubs and there's some leadership opportunities there. There are some opportunities to go to conferences, um, those type things all wrapped into the professional clubs. And these are pretty good things to have on your resumes as you go and look for a job as you get closer to graduation. Um, we do have an internship and career office uh, here in the college. So we have someone that's dedicated to trying to pair people up with internships. They're const uh, her name is uh, Sue McLernan. She's constantly working with um, uh, different companies in the area um, to make sure we have good relations with them, uh, make sure that they're, they're uh, 
offering up uh, internships for our students. They're contributing to make sure our programs stay current. Um, but um, in addition to internships, you'll help people as they get closer to graduation with their resumes and uh, prepping for interviews and things like that. We, we have a real good success rate with, uh, with our students getting hired out of uh, UCCS, uh, certainly in the College of Engineering and Applied Science, which is pretty good. And this, this office and, and the person uh, in charge is doing a great job for us. Um, certainly the faculty, like a lot of colleges, is doing research um, and, and that's, that's good. And, and sometimes some of the undergrad students can get involved in that research, certainly our grad students do, um, but it's a good way to expand your knowledge and dig a little deeper in some of the subject areas that might be uh, more interesting to you. Um, I don't know why these pies aren't closer together, but the four credit internships. So you can do internships on, you know, not for credit, uh, where, uh, or you could do some four credit internships. And I think there's just a little bit of academic uh, requirements and some probably a little more paperwork to fill out for for credit uh, in there. But there's no requirement to do it for credit. But certainly internships are a great way to build a resume and and take a look at some of the sectors within your discipline, as well as um, the local companies and they get a good look at you and a lot of people are hired uh, you know that did internships for the companies uh, because they know if you're a good worker and 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 that you're you're uh, you're gonna help the company and do well um, there are undergraduate research positions uh, that you can you can do and again it kind of goes with uh, learning from research of the faculty so you could certainly tie into other um, labs um, we do have some clubs so I imagine with cybersecurity they have the um, they do kind of like the hackathons and the um, um, uh, what do we call it um, where they're they're trying to basically uh, uh, cyber defense uh, type clubs and things like that which which are pretty good and get you a lot of good experience they're meant to be pretty fun they're com competitions and stuff so certainly good and, and I'll talk a little bit more about academic research and research labs in the next slide all right, so here for computer science, you can see there's certainly all these different labs and I won't go around and read them all to you. But again, these are, are ways, these, these work in a couple different ways. First of all, they, they help our faculty uh, build credibility in the, uh, uh, the discipline. Uh, the faculty do research and publish that research, which gives the university credibility. Um, they allow uh, certainly our grad students and our undergrad students some time in the labs to, to learn more about uh, specific uh, areas and, and you know, hopefully become uh, innovative and, and state-of-the-art and kind of help, help the discipline grow uh, intellectually as they move forward. So again, these are some of the labs. These are, are you know, as, as different um, emphasis areas come on, different labs might be formed or different research areas. So it's certainly not something that, that you would expect to stay uh, the same forever and that they will change and, and become uh, and stay uh, state of the art, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, one thing, you know, this, this kind of gets us back towards the discussion about the college as a whole, but this one really uh, works well with this uh, computer science uh, department. Um, right now, uh, we have another building that sort of belongs to engineering. It's, it's located uh, uh, a little bit off campus um, on Nevada Avenue, for those of you who might be familiar with the area, and we have what's called the cybersecurity building. And now in this building, there's a couple of um, companies. There's the National Cyber Cybersecurity uh, Center, and there's also a company called Exponential Impact. Exponential Impact is a uh, like a, a, a startup, or a, um, it, it helps companies start up and, and grow and, and become full companies. So it's uh, incubator is, is the term they would use. Um, we're we're building this uh, facility out with about five and a half million dollars worth of grants. There's about 30,000 square feet of classrooms and labs that are going to be built there. And I think they're hoping to have some of this construction started this year in hopes that maybe next fall we'll get into some of the areas. Um, and, and in there, we're also inviting some other companies and, and none of them are, are officially signed up, but these companies will be working right near our faculty and doing research near our faculty and working with some of our students and, and giving internships to our students. So there's a great opportunity that's right here just off campus um, that ha has, uh, is gonna really expand our capabilities in this uh, cybersecurity world uh, for sure. Um, we do have a new chair that's coming in January. He's been hired and we're just, we're excited to have him uh, uh, start working at, at UCCS. And he's uh, the 
um, an endowed chair, uh, professor of cybersecurity. So he's going to help expand the research, help expand the, uh, the coursework for the undergrads uh, and so on. And, and it's going to be a great opportunity for us uh, there as well. I already talked a little bit about the Center of Excellence in, in Cyber Defense. Um, and then uh, the big thing, Colorado Springs is is great location. I'll touch upon this a little bit more. We have great relationships with, with local uh, um, companies and uh, federal entities that are nearby. As most of you probably realize, uh, Space Force is going to be housed here for the next six years, I think. Um, and hopefully beyond that, um, if, if, you know, the area suits their their needs, and that's a great opportunity for UCCS. It's a great opportunity for our students uh, to have these these uh, these high end uh, federal agencies and companies here uh, that we can we can help provide uh, uh, workforce needs. So, you know, here's kind of the the sales pitch slide. You know, why UCCS Engineering and Applied Science? Uh, we do a lot of research. Um, and we're considered an R2 school. An R1 school are the schools that have huge uh, research emphasis. Being an R2 allows us to uh, make, maintain a lot of focus on, on the students and the undergraduate uh, courses. So our student, our faculty aren't just doing research, they're very involved with uh, the teaching of students and, and very dedicated to uh, student success. We have uh, what are called Excel centers. Those are really like uh, tutoring centers uh, for st students in, in variety of, of subjects. The math uh, Excel Center is located in the engineering building, for example, and students can go there and get help with their, their homework and projects and, and stuff. Uh, it's a little different now because it's um, being done uh, virtually for the most part, but, uh, but it's important to note that we have all these uh, Excel centers. I did talk about the ABET accreditation, and that's something as you look at different schools, that's something you should take note and see if uh, a lot of computer science programs are not accredited, uh, ours is, and I think that is a feather in our cap to, uh, to make sure that we, uh, um, we're staying current and constantly improving. I mentioned the size of the college earlier, about 1,700 students, so we're not too big, we're not too small. I think you'll find that there's a lot of uh, personal attention on each student um, because of the size, uh, and that's a, a great thing. Um, the high workforce demand, again, our students are getting hired as they graduate, uh, hired locally, hired um, nationally. Um, you know, we, we, we're very proud in, in the success that our students have had getting hired and, and going out to the workforce and doing great things. Uh, some of that has to do with our internship career office, which I talked about, and, and just the, the local area. Uh, Colorado Springs is a hotbed for, for computer science and engineering, and, and that puts us in a great position. We do have lots of scholarships. And one thing I'll say about scholarships, scholarships come in all shapes and sizes. You'll probably see a lot of these op scholarship opportunities as you're leaving um, your high school. So there's a lot through there. There's a lot through the college. There's a lot through the university. And those are something you should definitely uh, pay attention to. We have a great system here at, at UCCS. And I know the, the uh, Eddie and the other admissions folks on, on the call can certainly talk about, but we have this program called BAM, which is kind of one-stop one shopping for, for scholarships. So once you get accepted uh, to the university, uh, you can start looking at the different scholarship opportunities. And last of all, I'll tell you the faculty and staff here are tremendous. Uh, they work really hard. Um, they're, they're doing everything they can to make sure students are successful even during these uh, uncertain times. And I think it's a, a, a real great uh, positive for the university to have such uh, faculty and staff. And I think if you come and start meeting them, you'll see the, the enthusiasm they have and the, you know, how, how uh, good they are in, in the discipline. And, and certainly that, that goes across the college and, and definitely in uh, computer science as well. With that, um, I'll open it up to any questions. Um, and I'm gonna ask Eddie if you can help me uh, with the reading the questions, that'd be great. I'm sure there's probably a couple out there. Hopefully I got to a couple of them. Yeah, for sure. And you certainly have answered a couple of them. Um, looks like we've got a couple of questions coming in and we can certainly assist in, in answering some of these too. Um, oh, great. So we're getting a couple come in. Uh, first, uh, we've got a student asking, how big is UCCS on study abroad? And if you don't mind, uh, Mike, I'll actually take this one. Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so yeah, we do have study abroad programs at UCCS. We have an office dedicated to helping student finding opportunities for studying abroad. Um, so we can definitely help you with that. In fact, uh, this last year, the plan was to have students be able to sign up for study abroad for the fall semester before their classes even began. So we're gonna continue finding initiatives like those to help students find places to go abroad. The important thing to note about studying abroad in general is that every program has a time when it's best for that program to study abroad. Some programs are very, very flexible. Other programs, like from my personal experience coming from a student who majored in business, there are specific years that you can go out and find opportunities to study abroad. They're gonna enhance your education, but it's not always the same for every major. So my biggest recommendation is get admitted to UCCS start planning ahead for some of that stuff. And like I mentioned, we do have an office on our campus, our international affairs office that can help you with planning out for studying abroad. So that's a great question. We do have study abroad opportunities. A lot of students do it every year. Let's see. Um, I'm not sure, Michael, how many computer science students also do the honors program? Are you aware of any computer science students that, that do it if you have a count of that at all? Unfortunately, I don't have a number. Um, uh, you know, I think um, I, I'm not so sure I'd worry about how many do it. I think I'm sure there are some that are doing it. Uh, so it's certainly uh, something that's doable, but I don't I don't have a number off the top of my head. Um, and honors programs are, are, are an interesting opportunity. I think they, they provide a lot of um, uh, personal development, I think is probably the best way to put it for, for students that want to go that route. Um, and and I, I have some family members that have done that, uh, nephews and nieces, and, and they found it to be a great thing. It's not for everybody, um, but it's certainly an opportunity. And I would just encourage you to explore it as, a, as an opportunity and see what it entails um, here at UCCS. Great. Got another question here. What is the average classroom size? So that's a great question. Very quickly, just to answer that, we have around 20 to 25 students on average in the classroom. Speaking from my student experience, I've had classes that sit right around that 25 student size. I've also had classes as small as 11 students and the smallest class I've ever been in had eight students. So not super common for every class, but expect your courses to be at around 25 students in the classroom. Sure. and, and from a computer science, you know, standpoint and engineering standpoint, I would argue, argue that the labs will even be smaller, especially now during the pandemic, we've spread out the labs as much as we can. Um, I know I did some um, stuff for labs today and, and some of them had five, some of them uh, had 10. Um, and I think those are, are, are somewhat um, standard. Sometimes they, they'll have, you know, 15, 20, depending on the type of lab. Great. We've got another one here from Tanner asking is the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Science, or the Bachelor of Innovation degree in computer science best for going to cybersecurity? So I think they want to know which one is the better option. Yeah, uh, that's a, a great question. I think, you know, I think it depends on a lot of things. I think most of all, it depends on you, you know, it, what your, your capabilities are. If you don't feel that you're strong enough in math and science, but really are interested in the subject area, then the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Innovation might be the better route. I would argue that if you want to get into cybersecurity, um, you know, unless you want to have your own company and, and it, you know, kind of look at the entrepreneur business side of it, you probably want to stay in the, the, um, the um, Bachelor of Science or um, Bachelor of Arts. I, I would argue those would be the better one. If you're not interested in, in a, but if you're interested in going out on your own and having a business, then the Bachelor of Innovations. So I think it depends on the person a lot. I, I can't sit here and say, oh, there will be more job opportunities with this or that. I think it really depends on the person and, 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 and the courses you take. Again, the Bachelor of Arts gives that broad range of, um, of courses. Um, sort of, um, you know, kind of liberal arts side uh, of it, which which um, a lot of people leverage that into grad school opportunities, maybe get into, you know, law school or something like that, and, and you know, have that technical knowledge uh, as well. And so it just depends on what your your goals are and, and what direction you want to go. And, and, and also some of your, your academic capabilities. Not everybody is great at math. Not everyone's great at writing papers. I was terrible at writing papers. So I was, I was a true engineer that wanted to take math and science courses all the time. Um, and not everyone's like that. And I get that. And, and you really want to be where you're going to be most successful in the end. Fantastic. 
And then we have another question here. What is the likelihood of graduating within four years from with a degree in computer science? Um, again, I, there are people doing it. So, uh, you know, it, it really depends on, on you. If you, if you stumble along the way with the course and have to retake it, obviously that's not going to help you out a whole lot. Um, but I, I think there's certainly people that can do it. Um, depending on what high school you come from, if you come with, um, uh, some AP credits or, or, you know, um, some college credits, it's certainly going to help you out. So I think it's certainly there. I think there's there's people that are even graduating in less than four years, depending on how many courses they're able to uh, test out of or validate or or get credit for um, through AP. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it really has to do with the individuals. I think the college has uh, plans of study that can be done in four years. Um, not everybody chooses to do that for a variety of reasons. Um, but again, it, it, it's really individual, but yeah, it certainly is possible. Excellent. And I have a question here from Nancy wanting to know some examples of innovation courses. And if you're fine with this, Michael, I'll go ahead and take it away. Go ahead. <laughs> so when it comes to any of the Bachelor of Innovation degrees, there's gonna be an area of courses that are called the BI Innovation Core. Um, so as Michael mentioned this earlier, that innovation core has courses such as introduction to entrepreneurship, the innovation process, business and intellectual property law. Um, you have an innovation team course. You have several of those actually. So you're going to do research, design, analytics and reporting. Um, there's a technical writing course where you'll learn how to do proposals. Those proposals are going to be real business proposals from actual businesses, typically in Colorado or within the nation. And then lastly, entrepreneurship and strategy. So that's the BI business core. Every BI student takes those core courses, but every BI student also chooses a BI cross-discipline core. And that can be in several different areas. It may be in business, creative communication, globalization, um, even for transfer students, there is a BI cross-discipline core specifically for transfer students. So I hope that helps answer what some of that coursework may look like and what you may encounter within those courses. And then while I'm on the subject of that, I briefly mentioned transfer and I have a question here, would I be able to transfer into computer security uh, with BI? Yes, absolutely. Uh, my recommendation is if you are a transfer student in the call, um, interested in going into any area, please send us an email. Our email account is transfer at uccs.edu. Again, really simple, transfer at uccs.edu. We can help you find out how your courses might apply or even start planning for the future. Um, when it comes to the BI, that can be really tricky to navigate, so don't do it alone. Um, come to us and we're happy to help you with that. Um, and then Mike looks like another question here from Nancy. Um, off the top of your head, do you know of any of the research projects happening at UCCS, uh, College of Engineering and Applied Sciences is working on? Um, so unfortunately, I don't. That's where Jugal would have come in handy. Um, I, I apologize. Um, Nancy, if, if you send an email um, to Eddie or, or look me up on the assistant dean and send me an email, I'll, I'll definitely get you that information and make sure you, you have it. I apologize for not having it uh, on hand. No problem. Nancy, I'll get you my email. I'll send you a chat in here. So um, feel free to connect with us. We'll get you the information you need there. Um, let's see. Okay, so I, you spoke on this a little bit, Mike. Um, Alan asks, does UCCS help with internships or jobs after graduation? Um, so specifically it looks like maybe government jobs, just NSA? Sure, we have, uh, we have a lot of partners um, in industry. We have a lot of um, connections with uh, you know, the government jobs as well. Uh, to let you know, I'm uh, uh, actually now uh, retired uh, uh, military. So, um, you know, we certainly have connections there. We certainly uh, connect, we certainly work with these folks. Uh, dean Rayburn, uh, so the Dean of the College of Engineering and Applied Science was in a meeting with the four-star general from Space Force the other day, trying to figure out how we can, uh, we can work together and, and best serve their needs. Um, and meet their workforce demands here in the, the, the region. So there, there's a lot of conversations going on. Our internship coordinator, I can't say enough good things about uh, Sue. She works with the students. She has contacts all over. She's grew up here. She knows pretty much everybody um, who's in industry or federal government. So we have all those contacts and those are definitely things that we can, we can work with. There are certainly internship opportunities with uh, federal agencies. 
and some of those can certainly turn into jobs after graduation as well. So there's a great network here uh, that, that we have in the college. Um, so, so definitely we can work on those things. Excellent. Got another question here specifically about the admissions process. So is there direct entry into computer science or what I have to apply? So the process for all students coming into UCCS, you'll fill out the main application if you're a transfer student, you'll do the transfer specific one. If you're coming out of high school, even if you've done any dual enrollment or concurrent enrollment courses, you know, you'll apply through the freshman application. Through the application, you'll designate which major you're interested in. And then from there, we'll have you send your transcripts, ACT or SAT scores, if those apply to you, et cetera. And that application you can use for any one of the programs. So um, in terms of the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, you'll apply like any other student, although their admissions criteria may be different. It's not like you need to do two or three applications or anything like that. Hope that helps answer that question there. And let's see, Skylar has a question. Are many courses lab-based or do many courses have lab portions to them? Yeah, so um, unlike the, the two engineering programs we have, you know, computer science labs are, are a little different, right? It, it has more to do with softwares and computer skills. So right now, for example, um, because of the pandemic, they're probably doing, uh, of the different programs in the college, they have more stuff online because they can and they can work that way as opposed to, um, you know, electric uh, electrical engineering, building circuits and stuff with your hands or mechanical engineering, um, doing labs with their hands. So it's a little different with that, but they do have computer uh, lab um, type courses. Um, you know, and, and again, it, you know, teaching programming, it's a lot easier to have an instructor kind of leaning over your shoulder and helping you um, debug your programs and things like that. So those are certainly uh, there. Um, I'm uh, Eddie, you can help me. The, the plans of study are probably on um, online um, in, in those plans of study, and, and, and we can get you the link, uh, I think it was Skylar who asked this question. Um, the plan of study is, is online, and you can look at the different courses and see which ones are lab-based and which ones are, are just uh, lecture-based, um, and I think that's probably the best answer you, you can have. Yeah, for sure. Definitely agree with that. Um, Skylar, if you have the chance, feel free to connect with us. Um, you can email us even at transfer at ucs.edu. I'm happy to help you there. Um, but on our website, if you look up advising, you can actually look up the four-year advising guides and those walk you through explicitly course by course what those courses break down to. And for the most part, that'll tell you um, if those courses have a lab portion, how many credit hours they are. And then also, and more importantly, which order to take those in and that accounts for uh, any sort of prerequisite courses or co-requisite courses for them. So definitely recommend and, and agree with what Mike said there. And looks like uh, Jess got you a list there. So go ahead and use that link, please, Skylar. That'll be super useful. So we've got another question about application. How long after sending an application should we expect a response? That's a fantastic question. Typically, we say two to three weeks. Um, right around now, we've got a lot of applications coming in. So I would aim more for around the three week, week period. And that's after you send in all the necessary materials. So once we have everything, then we can start reviewing you for admission. So. If you've got transcripts on the way and those take a week, um, that week does not count for the application period where we're looking at it. So um, count for those three weeks uh, at around, but we are getting to students um, even faster than that in some cases. So um, my recommendations always apply early. Um, let's see. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you know the answer to Stephen's question here, but Stephen asks, when it comes to working with cloud development like Azure and AWS, does the college offer courses on these topics or even labs on those topics? Um, I don't know the answer and I apologize. Um, what I would say is, since, you know, I wanna say it's still relatively new. Um, and as it becomes more and more common and more and more, um, you know, using every day. And I know, uh, you know, the, the UCCS webpage is, is cloud-based at uh, or it will be. So I think as these things become more and more, you would certainly expect to see parts of that in the curriculum. So if it's not already in it, I would certainly see it, expect to see it soon. I imagine it is in the, in the 
uh, computer science uh, curriculum and somewhere. It may not be so obvious that you look up on the, you know, the plan of study that they gave the link for that you see like, you know, cloud intro to cloud based, you know, computing or whatever, but it, it's embedded in some of the course. I, I would be fair, really confident that that it's shown up somewhere. Um, and again, that, you know, as, as that becomes more, um, uh, more important across that that discipline, I would expect to see some research and things like that. So there certainly would be opportunities uh, to pair up with faculty and do some research in those areas if it really uh, um, uh, was important to you. Um, I would say, um, and, and I apologize, I forget who asked the question, but I would say if, you know, send the link and I can get a for certain answer and show you which courses it's in uh, if if you want. Fantastic. Uh, looks like we've got another question coming in here. So what do I need to do after I get accepted? Great question, Tanner. You're going to receive by letter and also by email some instructions on next steps. The biggest thing, if it's for spring, is to get registered for orientation as soon as you can. Those are already opening up here. Um, they started at the end of October, so you're still in a really great time frame. If it's going to be for the fall, you still have a little bit of waiting to do for that. Um, but you will follow the steps that we send you there in that letter and then wait until the summer, get registered for an orientation. And we will help you take care of things from there. And let me see. Um, I knew I was going to get my email to someone so that I could answer their question. Um, I'm having trouble finding you in the participant list again. Would you mind just submitting another Q&A and saying, send me your email or something like that? And I will make sure to connect with you there. Um, and looks like one last live question. Great. Thank you, Nancy, so much. Um, looks like one last question that we'll take here. Um, Darshan asks, how is dorm life like in UCCS? So our residence halls are very different than probably the way that you've seen dorms represented in movies before. We don't have communal bathrooms. It's all suite-based living. So that means that you're going to have a key to your suite. That suite has a living room and a bathroom. And then off of that suite, we're going to have several rooms for people to live. You're going to have options between singles, doubles, and triples as your room option. If you have a single, that means that you have a bedroom all to yourself. But the nice thing is that you can still open that door and you still have your living area. You still have a bathroom and you still technically have roommates, but you still have your private area for yourself in the form of that room. So fantastic question. And Nancy, let me get you my email here. Perfect. And your question should be visible to everyone here in the Q&A. So if anyone needs my email, oh, and Jess sent it as well. Thank you, Jess. You're three steps ahead of me. Um, that looks like it's all for today. Thank you all for coming, for submitting your questions, for being attentive and participating with us. As I mentioned at the beginning, feel free to engage with us on our virtual webpage. It's uccs.edu slash virtual. You can view more events like this one that we had here today as well as sign up for future events, whether they're major Monday related or not. We have a ton coming up uh, for the rest of the semester. Um, thanks, Mike, for coming and, and sharing with us and presenting, um, sharing your wisdom and knowledge with us. We super appreciate it. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for coming. This video will be posted soon. Mike, do you have any closing thoughts or statements to make? Sure. Um, certainly, if, as you have more questions, please send those in. We'll, we'll make sure we get the answers. We'll try to get the answers to the questions we weren't able to give uh, definitive uh, tonight. Uh, certainly great to have so much interest in the program. Uh, look forward to hopefully soon seeing you all uh, on campus, whether for a tour or, or checking in on, on day one of your college career. Uh, as I said before, this is an exciting time for you all. Uh, definitely find the school that's right for you. Uh, hopefully it's UCCS, but, but obviously um, for some of you that may not be the case, but find the right school and right program for you and, and, and it's, it'll be a, a great experience. Um, appreciate again all the interest and, and wish you all the best of luck. And, and again, if you have questions, please get them to us. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Um, can't put it any better than that. Thank you for coming, folks. Have a great rest of your night. Take care. We'll see you in video format soon. Bye-bye.